we are going to continue to look at how we can do some processing using SQL but we're going to be looking mainly at the advanced features of when we're using a select statement and this is a part of the information technology grade 12 caps syllabus so just a reminder about what database we are using we're using a CD database which has details about CDs and the people who own these CDs and the table called owner has the following information there you can see all the information about the owner and for example owner number two whose name is Peter Donovan and there's his details the second table in the database uh, CD database is called CD and it contains the details of the different types of CDs that are stored I don't know who owns these um, but if you see in the far right hand side you can see their owner ID now that is linked to the previous table that we looked at so if we look at for example CD number four Celine Dion a new day has come that CD is owned by owner ID 2 which if you remember was that Peter Donovan guy so there you can see who owns what CD so now we're going to be using both the tables for our SQL statements. So we're going to, we want to use multiple tables. So how do we extract data? So if we want to extract the details about um, the, the CD owner and the CD, um, then we need to use both tables. And for that, there are two key steps that you need to be aware of. The first step is in the from part. You need to mention all the table names of the tables that you are using and in this case or in previous cases we've only been using one so we always said from CD or from owner now we get it from more than one table so you need to specify from CD and then you separate them with a comma so from CD comma owner and then in your where condition you need to always include this condition irrespective of whether there are other conditions you can always add them but this condition has to be included and that is you need to specify where is the join between the two tables what links them and in our case the in CD we have an owner ID which is linked to the owner ID in the owner table now conveniently for us those two fields have the exact same name it doesn't have to have the same name there could be CD dot owner code equals to owner dot owner ID for example they don't have to have the same name it's just convenient in our situation but you need to specify what field is linked in the two fields now if you remember in the CD table we had an owner ID which is linked to the owner tables owner ID so knowing that let's look at an example we are going to select the CD name the owner name and the contact details from the CD and the owner tables now if you look at that the CD name we will be getting from the CD table but the owner's name and the owner's contact details we cannot get from the CD because the CD the CD table only has the owner ID but because they are linked we can get the owner name and the contact details from the owner table so we include the owner table in this instance and my only criteria in this case is we need to specify what is the link and as I said before it's the owner ID in the CD table is connected to the owner ID in the owner table so let's try this out in an actual database so here we've got our access database and there are two tables we are going to go create and use query design to create a query and I'm just going to close that that little box that pops up we're just going to close that and I am going to go straight to the SQL view so let's go with our select now we wanted to select the CD name I think it was CD underscore name if you're not sure you can just double check on the CD table there we go CD underscore name that's fine and we also want the owner details now if we open up the owner table we wanted the owner's name and the owner's contact details so those are the two fields we want over there so we want owner name and then contact details like that and where are we getting these fields well we're getting them from the CD table as well as the owner table and my condition remember this two steps we include both tables and the other step is we must include the link between the two and we say we, we can't just say owner ID equals owner ID because it doesn't know what that is we need to specify the CD table 
Oh, so let me get the right spot there. CD dot owner ID, which means the owner ID in the CD table. And then we need to specify the owner table dot owner ID. Now let's see if that works. If we view it, there we can see the CDs names and those are the owners who own those CDs. Okay. So there we go. We can see all the details of all the CDs and those are the contact details of those people. So now I can go look at the CD name and go, I want to contact that owner so I can borrow their CD. Now going back to our SQL over here, I just want to show you some things that you might see if you are using multiple tables. Sometimes what especially if you've got uh, names or field names that are the same in both tables. Maybe we've got a name field in the CD table and a name field in the owner table. Like, how do we know which one's which? Sometimes, you just like we did over here, we need to specify which um, table it comes from. So you could go CD dot CD name, because that comes from the CD table, and you can go owner dot owner name, and owner dot contact details. You can do that, but as you can see, it makes it quite long. Another technique that they often use is, especially if the table names are quite long, and then you've got to rewrite all these things all the time. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll actually say, well, the CD table, and then they'll use as A, and then they'll say owner as B. So they're almost renaming those tables. So instead of having to write the whole name of the table, you can say a.cd, b.ownername, and b.contactdetails. So, and then obviously over here, we also need to specify a or b.ownername, and well that's actually was owner so that should be a b it does obviously for this field it doesn't matter if it's cd first or owner first they all work out okay so there we go so if it runs let's see if it works and there we go you can see we get the same results now if you remember our criteria for this case is if we just go to the sql sorry uh, criteria there's no actual criteria that we had to put that criteria in because we're using multiple tables but if you've got other criteria that you would like to include like maybe we only want the people who um, the owner id is only equal to two or something like that or the name or the the name of the cd equals something so let's look at some results so we can get some idea of what to ask let's say if owner name equals peter donovan for example let's try that option so we've got this criteria and at the same name t same time we want b dot owner name to equal double quote peter donovan i don't know if i'm spelling that correctly we'll see now if we get any results no results, so that obviously means I've spelt it incorrectly. So let's go back to the SQL and Donovan. Let's go look at the owner table, see how we spell Donovan. Dono, there we go. My apologies. Don O. There. And there we go. We've got a query now which links the two tables, and it's also an added criteria that we only want th those that particular owner. Other types of advanced features include if we want to get unique results. For example, if you remember our database, we could have a whole long list of all the different genre types that we've got um, in our CD table. But if I make a field, and let's go, let's go to the SQL and actually create a list of all the genre types in the CD table. So if I type in genre, select genre from CD. Let's see what that does. And there we go. We've got a nice list of all the different genre types. But as you can see, there are some da data that's duplicated. Okay, so how do we count counter that? Or how do we not have that option? So what you can do is you can use the distinct name. So you just use the word distinct in front of the field that you want distinct. And basically what it'll do is it'll remove any duplicates. It'll only say which field. And if it's been mentioned before, it will not mention it again. So let's try that in our current example. We've already got select a genre from CD. Let's add the distinct keyword in. So here's our genre with all of them. But if we go to the SQL 
and we add in distinct in front of genre distinct I hope I spelled that correctly now we get a list of only the single genre so there's one of each genre there so that's a nice little list of all the different types of genres that are listed in my CD table another feature that we may want to add to our queries is maybe we want to sort the data based on a certain criteria so we've looked at how to get unique records how about the sorting now to use sorting we use the order by phrase and we must use this last this is the last thing that we say use order by after the last statement this is normally after your criteria and there's some examples we can order by artist which means it will sort in ascending order according to artist if we want to specify in descending order then we must use the desc at the end of it like that so you use that as your phrase after the the field name to specify if it is in descending order and if you want to sort by multiple criteria in other words first on genre then by artist then you would specify first the field name for genre followed by a comma then by artist if you wanted to use descending in this uh, example you could say genre space desc and then a comma artist and whatever you want there if you wanted descending as well you could say desc so let's try that in our example so over here i've got select star from cd which if i run gives me all the details in the cd table but if i go back to the sql and after the from clause or if i had a where clause i would put this after the where clause i can say order bar and then artist and if i run that you can see it is sorted according to the artist name if i add a desc at the end of that then it will sort in descending order according to artist and if i wanted to sort first by genre and then if the genres are the same then sort by artist then i can come here to sql view and i'll say genre first and i want it in ascending order by genre and then let's say descending order of artists so if we run it there you can see the genres are sorted first there are some blank genres then we got Afropop, then Alternative Metal, there's quite a few of them. But if you look at just the Alternative Metal by itself, if you just look at those records there, for example, you'll notice that when the genre is the same, the next criteria is to sort it by artist in descending order. And there you can see it's in descending order. And the same for any of these. So if you look there at the blank ones, you can see it's all blank and then they are sorted in descending order according to artist for more videos about sql and other delphi related issues um, please go to our youtube channel mr long video education and um, there is the the address subscribe please leave comments we'd love to hear from you and also follow us on twitter so you can keep up to date whenever we release new videos and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way the examples from today's lesson come from the Delphi eNotes for grade 12 from study opportunities. These are available in 2014. In 2015, they'll be releasing a textbook which covers the entire grade 12 CAPS syllabus. If your teacher is interested in getting these textbooks, they can contact the, the people at the following website.